tales for dark nights. The following performance is a first round entry in the 2017 Evil Idol voice acting competition. Voting is simple. Following the performance, simply click the thumbs up icon on this video if you'd like them to become a member of the team, or the thumbs down if you'd rather they not. Voting on this entry will conclude one week after the date of its posting. Good luck to all of our contestants. After a time, I seemed to hear the stairs and corridors creak at intervals, as if with footsteps, and wondered if the other rooms were beginning to fill up. There were no voices, however, and it struck me that there was something subtly furtive about the creaking. I did not like it, and debated whether I had better try to sleep at all. This town had some queer people, and there had undoubtedly been several disappearances. Was this one of those inns where travellers were slain for their money? Surely I had no look of excessive prosperity, or were the townsfolk really so resentful about curious visitors? Had my obvious sightseeing with its frequent map consultations aroused unfavourable notice? It occurred to me that I must be in a highly nervous state to let a few random creakings set me off speculating in this fashion, but I regretted nonetheless that I was unarmed. At length, feeling a fatigue which had nothing of drowsiness in it, I bolted the newly outfitted hall door, turned off the light, and threw myself down on the hard, uneven bed, coat, collar, shoes and all. In the darkness, every faint noise of the night seemed magnified, and a flood of doubly unpleasant thoughts swept over me. I was sorry I had put out the light, yet was too tired to rise and turn it on again, then, after a long, dreary interval, and prefaced by a fresh creaking of stairs and corridor, there came that soft, damnably unmistakable sound which seemed like a malign fulfilment of all my apprehensions. Without the least shadow of a doubt, the lock of my door was being tried, cautiously, furtively, tentatively, with a key. My sensations upon recognizing this sign of actual peril were perhaps less rather than more tumultuous because of my previous vague fears. I had been, albeit without definite reason, instinctively on my guard, and that was to my advantage in the new and real crisis, whatever it might turn out to be. Nevertheless, the change in the menace from vague premonition to immediate reality was a profound shock, and fell upon me with the force of a genuine blow. It never once occurred to me that the fumbling might be a mere mistake. Malign purpose was all I could think of, and I kept deathly quiet, awaiting the would-be intruder's next move. After a time, the cautious rattling ceased, and I heard the room to the north entered with a passkey. Then the lock of the connecting door to my room was softly tried. The bolt held, of course, and I heard the floor creak as the prowler left the room. After a moment, there came another soft rattling, and I knew that the room to the south of me was being entered. Again, a furtive trying of a bolted connecting door, and again, a receding creaking. This time, the creaking went along the hall and down the stairs, so I knew that the prowler had realized the bolted condition of my doors, and was giving up his attempt for a greater or lesser time, as the future would show. The readiness with which I fell into a plan of action proves that I must have been subconsciously fearing some menace, and considering possible avenues of escape for hours. From the first, I felt that the unseen fumbler meant a danger not to be met or dealt with, but only to be fled from, as precipitately as possible. The one thing to do was to get out of that hotel alive, as quickly as I could and through some channel other than the front stairs and lobby. Rising softly and throwing my flashlight on the switch, I sought to light the bulb over my bed in order to choose and pocket some belongings for a swift, valiseless flight. 
Nothing, however, happened, and I saw that the power had been cut off. Clearly some cryptic evil movement was afoot, on a large scale. Just what I could not say. As I stood pondering with my hand on the now useless switch, I heard a muffled creaking on the floor below, and thought I could barely distinguish voices in conversation. A moment later I felt less sure the deeper sounds were voices, since the apparent hoarse barkings and loose-syllabled croakings bore so little resemblance to recognized human speech. Then I thought with renewed force of what the factory inspector had heard in the night, in this mouldering and pestilential building. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, don't forget to cast your vote for this contestant via either a thumbs up or thumbs down vote. New entries will be posted throughout July. Be sure to tune in and vote for each of them and help decide who becomes the next Evil Idol. In the meantime, turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.